and here we go with the second Q&A round now. So please raise your hand and uh, get your questions uh, clarified. I'm open for the second round of the Q&A. Yeah, let me bring uh, Murali Krishna on the board. Yeah, Murali, over to you. Are you able to hear me? Hi, Murli. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, good Do you afternoon. find the presentation uh, helpful, Murli? Yeah, it's really helpful and uh, interactive and uh, more informative. <laughs> uh, thanks Great. for it. And thanks for your feedback. Can you, yeah. yeah, can you explain once again about the uh, salt gradient? Uh, this concept is uh, somewhat uh, new to me. See, do you know the gradient in case of our reverse test tomatography? You increase the concentration of organic solvent over a period of time, right? Yes. So uh, you have mobile phase A with 100% aqueous, and you say mobile phase B with 100% organic. And you have two different analytical compounds. Analytes, one is uh, very polar and other is very non-polar. <laughs> So you have the weaker mobile phase containing the low amount of the organic content. Let us say 90% aqueous and only 10% organic. That becomes your weak mobile phase. You wait until your compound one gets solute. And once the compound one gets solute, you know that now I need to increase the strength of the mobile phase. So how you are going to increase the strength of the mobile phase, Murli? You are just going to increase the proportion of your organic solvent. Maybe let us say at, uh, at the rate of... Uh, uh, 10%, you will say that I will modify my mobile phase from 90-10 to 10-90. So 10% is only your aqueous now and 90% is your organic component. So with this now, your second compound is going to elute quickly from the mobile phase. This is the gradient, right, in our reverse phase chromatograph. Yes. Now in case of uh, uh, ion exchange chromatography, you have the, the aqueous buffer with, let us say, 2 millimolar potassium phosphate, 2 millimolar potassium phosphate, and you have the, uh, the two compounds to be eluted. The first compound gets eluted at 10 minutes and second compounds eluted at 60 minutes. But we don't want to, this is the isocratic situation. The 2 millimolar phosphate buffer running until 60 minutes. So what you do, you run the system until 10 minutes with 2 millimolar phosphate buffer, right? And then you include the gradient from the, the, the phase B, Port B, you start pumping more portion of, let us say, 20 millimolar phosphate buffer solution now. It was, let us say, 100% zero until 10 minutes. And then your mobile phase only consists of 2 millimolar uh, potassium phosphate buffer. The moment the 10 minutes gets over, you are switching to now 100% to the 20 millimolar phosphate buffer. So what is happening over here, the strength, the concentration of organic, uh, sorry, the concentration of salt is drastically get changed from yes. 2 millimolar to 20 millimolar. Now, in this situation, the, the tragedy is your analyte will have the lesser chances for occupying the SO3 minus place. Okay. Because this K plus is in great competition now. Okay. They were only 2 millimolar until 10 minutes, but now they are, uh, they are 10 times more. So That's they will good. occupy SO3 minus much better and efficiently as compared to your BH plus. So BH plus will not have any place for the retention onto the column. Okay. And, and because of that, you will have the lesser reduced retention time for the BH plus. That is called as a salt, salt gradient. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, more information. Mm -hmm. Great. Murphy. Thank you so much for asking this question. And let me bring, uh, I think, uh, Esha Patel on the board. Esha, over to you. Uh, sir, I want to know, can we eliminate the RRT difference in terms of consistency uh, with like in terms of when we analyze 100 uh, lot of batches and do uh, some trending and then we found some batches are uh, like uh, 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 differences in the RRT. So in terms of method development, how can we eliminate the RRT differences in terms of method consistency because so like, think, uh, uh, with method development we generally evaluate uh, like maximum three lots or 10 lots and then we qualify the method in hmm. uh, in terms of real time situation so hmm. later on my point is 
method is consistent throughout the product life cycle if any undesirable changes are not uh, we get in the product yeah i think uh, so i have any uh, suggestion in that so uh, i you heard about uh, the conversation on uh, the pk value and the retention time reproducibility yes yes that the solution is okay so uh, in that case i have uh, one question in suppose uh, buffer uh, ph is 7 and our uh, R, rrt is in between 7 to 8 so sometimes molecule pk value is also hindering that property or not in terms of method development see one thing you need to get very clear that uh, if you have the the two different pk compounds 7 and 8 yes. that's what you are trying to say and you have maintained yeah, yeah. the ph let us say let us say ph 3 so yeah. what is going to be the ionization of this or both the compounds 7 and 8 if they are uh, let us say uh, uh, weak acidic in the nature right so they will be non ionic in the nature at ph equal to 2 yeah but it is not in the nature but if you retain but if you maintain the ph equal to 6 if you maintain the ph equal to 6 then probably the compound having pk will also be almost non ionic yeah. am i right but yeah. the compound but, having pk around uh, 7 that can be only 50% ionic so you can see yeah. the retention variation coming from compound number 7 the compound having pk 7 and you may not see the variation in the retention time for the compound having pk8 yeah so if uh, the sir, 6 ph correct then yeah uh, but sometimes i am saying in terms of uh, variability in uh, ph meter result because uh, like suppose we have 5 ph meter in the lab then uh, if you check the ph across the 5 uh, ph meter and uh, after buffer preparation it is not throughout the consistent because it is variable in the basis of ph meter slope and day uh, to day calibration result so, so that's that what i think isha cover in the consistency so if you keep the ph equal to 2 now okay pk is 7 and pk is 8 What is your possible pH variation in the measurement? Uh, uh, when I have done the experiment, it is about like point two, point two one time I get, and one time I get point three. So that buffer, so I have discarded in that case. But when I hold on, hold on, I am I am not asking the second question to you. You need to first listen first, Asia. Hmm? Okay. If you want the answer, I think uh, you should uh, have the the listening skill too. Yeah. There's a reason I am asking specific question to you is suppose your your pH meter has the the error of point five, not point two. It can be one point five. It can be two point five also. Possible. Yeah. Right. So what is likely chances of retention time in case if your pH is actually one point five or actually two point five in the same situation now? Yes. Can you get the retention variation now? Not much. If it not, is same, not at change. all. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. That indicates that you know how smartly we are selecting our pH range in thinking to accommodate our daily day-to-day -day variations. It is very important. If I just say okay now plus or minus one point five. But if my pH is varying from 0.5, I will go another 0.5 units toward the lower side. Maybe one more unit toward the lower side. So I have confidence yeah. that now nothing is going to happen. At least as far as pH is concerned, my retention time is going to be reproducible. There could be several other reasons for the variations. It's not only pH is going to take the role in the pH retention. Yeah, yeah. Retention it is variation. also depend on column and. Other How are managing your column? How the column washing has been done? If you throw your column at the end of the analysis, you know it's not fault of the column, right? Yeah. We also need to take care of our column. In case if our sample has some matrix uh, polymer present into it, how sample treatment are given? Are you filtering the sample? Are you sonicating the sample? Are you centrifugating the sample? How the sample solutions are achieved out of sample matrix? 
is also going to take a role into your column performance and overall impact onto the analysis. But I just try to explain how the pH, yeah, yeah. you can nullify theoretically, practically by looking at your possible variations during the pH measurement. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Thank you so much, Esha. And uh, let me bring now, I think, uh, uh, Rahul on the board. Yeah, Rahul, over to you. Rahul, can you hear me? Please unmute yourself and ask a question quickly. Yes, sir. Yes, you have a question for me, Rahul? Nothing, sir. I've okay. just managed to join. Let me bring, I think, uh, uh, Yes Thakur on the board. Yeah. Yes Thakur, please uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. Yes, good morning, sir. Yeah, good yeah, good afternoon. Yes, uh, it's good uh, afternoon now. All, <laughs> yes, yes. First of all, thank you for this beautiful session, sir. Sir, actually, I'm working on parabens. Hmm. Uh, so, so, a couple of months ago, I was able to get all the peaks of paraben. Uh, regarding methyl, ethyl, propylene, butyl. Hmm. But, uh, sir, but now the problem is I'm getting a complete negative particular yeah, reason. Yeah, I, I'm not, I, I miss your little uh, last portion of your uh, the question. You're working on parabens, you said you, earlier you yes, were yes. able to get beautiful pics. What happens next thing? Yes, yes, yes. Sir, now, now I am getting a complete negative dip negative peaks negative peaks not not it, it, it is actually a deep negative drip, deep, just drip like, in the baseline like, yes yes just, just yes yes baseline just like a water bath in that particular region where i get retention time prior hmm. yes sir. so so sir could you please suggest me how can i get rid of this troubleshoot so i think totally you know uh, yes. uh, with limited uh, knowledge i have from your method i can suggest you to this happens because of the change in your absorbance change yes, in, see why the mobile phase uh, why the baseline will go to the negative side okay. because you adjusted your mobile your baseline to the zero while the injection takes place right zero at a zero that means yes. whatever mobile phase was flowing through the flow cell it has let us say point 0.1 absorbance unit value Okay. Right. So that point yeah. one absorbance unit value will be read as zero by the system now. Okay. Okay. Point one absorbance unit value has considered as a zero. There is a now relationship between point one and point uh, point one AU and zero. The moment you get your sample eluted out of the uh, out of your flow cell, the flow cell say okay now there is a great absorbance and then you see the peak out of the chromatogram out of the analyte eluting the uh, flow cell. Yeah. You see the positive deflection, you are happy with the peak, right? But yes, just yes. assume that in case, in case if you have started pumping the mobile phase after right. 10 minutes, you start pumping, you switch your mobile phase to another mobile phase, having the having the response of uh, 0 0.05. 0 0.05, all right, sir. 0 0.05. All right. So point 0.1 was, uh, point 0.1 was zero for system, right? Okay, 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 sir. Okay, sir. No, point 0.05 will be how much? Minus point 0.05. Yes, sir. sir it's a little, little confusing for me. See, uh, I said that the point 0.1 absorbance unit value was your absorbance of the mobile phase, right? I don't know. Okay, sir. And when you inject the sample, what is flowing through the flow cell? Tell me. The chlorine, sir. What is the what is the content flowing through the flow cell? It is the mobile phase. Mobile phase, yes, yes. Mo right. Mobile phase. So your, your mobile phase contains some organic solvent, and because of that, it has a point one absorbance unit value. Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Possible. Mobile, no? Yes, yes, yes. Mobile, mobile phase, phase has some absorbance absolute. value, which is point one absorbance unit. You must have seen on the on the scale of Y, there is absorbance unit. Yes, yes, so, yes. So, uh, what is uh, ideally done? The system will do the auto zero at the during the injection. Okay, so, this okay. point one will be considered zero now. Point right. one absorbance unit will be taken as a point zero zero, zero point zero zero absorbance. This is a relationship your system has built with this particular injection. 
So as long as the absorbance of the mobile phase remains 0.1, you will see the flat, beautiful baseline. Okay. If you see the absorbance of mobile phase reaching to 0.2, what will happen now? 0.1 equal to 0, but 0.2 equal to 0 plus 0.1. That becomes 0. 0.1. Oh, yes, yes, and 0. Point, yes, so point yes, 0.1 point. is 0, no? Point 0.1 is 0. So, but point 0.1 plus point 0.1 again, point 0.2 means, isn't it? So, eventually, yes, yes. first point 0.1 will get replaced by 0. And, but you have the another point 0.1. So, you will become point 0.1, not point 0.2. If your mobile phase uh, reaches with the absorbance unit of 0.3 now, so 0.3 okay. can be written as 0.1 plus 0.2. Yes, 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 sir. 0 0.1 plus 0.2. So initial 0.1 okay. is what, according to system, is 0. 0, 0, 0. So 0 plus 0.2 becomes 0 0.2. You will see the 0 0.2 drip out on the positive side. If I say that your systems, uh, your systems uh, uh, mobile phase absorbance goes to uh, zero actual absorbance goes to zero. What is going to be the the net absorbance you can see on the system? Point zero minus point one becomes point one minus point one. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Sir, sir. Actually, sir, I, I was thinking prior that maybe this problem is due to uh, detector. Actually, the system is very old. Hmm. Uh, so it it sometimes doesn't work properly. Uh, yeah. So this is the one problem. reason. I you are absolutely right. So the the fundamental I thought of uh, clarifying with you how this yes. uh, measurement happens and takes place. So yes, that yes, becomes yes. the reason you must have seen sometimes the compound is giving the negative deflection of the baseline. That is because yes, your mobile phase now has the lower absorbance value as compared to your earlier mobile phase. Sometimes you must have seen that the, the sample solvent can also make some deflection in the mobile phase based mm -hmm. on to its absorbance value. If the sample has greater absorbance value, you'll see the plus peak yes, comes. Yes, if the negative means you'll see the minus peak comes. That is the only reason. So there are several reasons. One is you rightly said the, the contaminated mobile, the, uh, the flow cell can also result into, but more strongly, I suspect probably no. Yes. You know, but sometimes... Uh, Sometimes your uh, mobile phase stability also impacts. Uh, the, the quality of your water also impacts. What is the quality of your water you are using is greatly impacted onto the mobile phase baseline. If it is UPLC, then you have to be much more careful about the quality of the water. So also look at the quality of the water. What is the earlier quality? What is the current quality in terms of the total organic content, its conductivity? So that will help you to probably I you know get the root cause yes. for this yeah yes 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 sir thank you thank you so much sir thank you